One of the craziest arguments I have ever heard to support a particular religious belief system is that put forward to me by a born-again Christian. They actually claimed, this person claimed, that in order to become a born-again Christian one need not believe in Jesus or in their God. Think about that for a moment. Well, I did. And I asked them the natural question. Well, how would one become a born-again Christian if one did not believe in the existence of Jesus and God? And this was the argument they put forward. They said, well, what you need to do is you need to lose essentially everything every possession that you might possibly have so that you are in fact at rock bottom at that point you will be in a situation where you will realize that there is no other way out of that situation but to surrender to the mercy of God and Jesus who will then respond to you and drag you out of the hole that you're in hence the whole idea of becoming a born-again Christian and again I said how does that preclude the belief in a God or Jesus you know you can very easily think of a scenario where this cannot possibly apply. Imagine somebody in exactly that uh, situation but who happens to be a member of a remote tribe on a hitherto undiscovered island. They will never have heard of Jesus or God. So even if they were in that position where they had lost absolutely everything and all they could think of is to reach out in the hope that something will pick them up. There is absolutely no way on earth that such a person would then arrive at the conclusion, if things improved for them, that it was Jesus who picked them up, or God. Because those two things would be concepts that would be completely alien to that person. They would never have heard of them and they don't just pop into your head. What actually happens in a case of born-again Christianity is that they very cleverly seek out those people who have hit rock bottom and then pretend to reach out their hand of concern, of help and then while they're doing that attributing the improvement of the circumstances that that person will inevitably enjoy to their God and their Jesus. And in order for somebody to feel themselves in a position where only God or Jesus could help them out, they must necessarily be in a position where they believe in the existence of those entities. And that is the very reason why I started this with that incredibly tacky Ebba song. But in that Ebba song, it states that Napoleon surrendered at Waterloo. Now he didn't surrender to Jesus or to God. On the 18th of June, 1815, Napoleon surrendered to the Duke of Wellington. Now why did he surrender to the Duke of Wellington? For a very simple reason. The Duke of Wellington was undeniably there. His army was undeniably real. And the reality of the situation was put to the test in the battle that took place in which it was incontrovertibly proven that the Duke of Wellington's army outclassed and outperformed Napoleon's. 
and in the face of that evidence and being a reasonable man that he was at least to that extent he realized that he had no other option and he surrendered now if there's any born again Christian watching this video please tell me once again and this time stop beating around the bush and just clarify how exactly a person would surrender to Jesus without the precondition of actually believing in that mythical creature. Thank you.